Now the Tesla Model S should be completely against petrol head religion. I should be a complete atheist against this car, but I really am not. Now first impressions of the Model S are that it drives pretty much like any other automatic luxury saloon. The interior is extremely quiet because there is no engine going rah, it's just tire noise, tire roar, which considering that these are massive 21 inch low rolling resistance tires is extremely minimal. The electric steering, you can have it however heavy you want. I've got it in sport mode at the moment. You can have it in comfort or standard. Sport mode, I feel, just makes it a little bit heavier, makes it feel a little bit more like a sports car. Because all the batteries are extremely low down in the car, you've got a really low center of gravity, which means you can take corners especially quickly. The only downside of taking a corner quickly in this car is that you've got these seats which don't really have side bolsters. So if I were to go around a corner, say a left, I'm gonna do it now, uh, like that, yeah. Corners, I need more support, I need more support, I need more support, no, no, not getting any support. I would like to have sportier seats in a car that will absolutely decimate most cars off the line. Don't forget, we've got 360 brake horsepower, 335 pound foot of torque, and it will do naught to 60 in 5.5 four seconds. Now this is only the P85 rear wheel drive model. There's also a P85D, which is all wheel drive, which I'm sure you guys have seen all over YouTube. I mean, that thing is gonna be absolutely insane. This has got 360 brake horsepower. The P85D, get this, will have around 700 horsepower. Now, I find the torque in this already absolutely insane. You can see Ethan, <laughs> Ethan's head. It doesn't feel particularly scary because obviously there's no gear to go through. So it's always completely linear. It's like if you're in an aeroplane, you know you're doing 500 miles an hour, but it doesn't feel fast. Going from 30 to 50, done. That was about a second and a half. The bad news is that the car that we've got here is a now discontinued rear wheel drive P85, which would have set you back around 69 grand. The good news, actually the awesome news, is that its replacement, the batch crazy P85D, costs only 10 grand more at 79,000. Which, when you remember that it's got nearly 700 horsepower, all wheel drive and enough torque to slow the earth's rotation, represents phenomenal value for money. So let me quickly show you through the suspension settings, which I think I've got down now. We're in low at the moment, so the car is as squat to the ground as possible. If you're in a kind of pitted car park like we are, I would put it to very high and wait for it. If I just drag that down, 100% open. Boom, look at that. How cool is that? You can also control the sunroof from steering wheel buttons here. I'm not gonna mess with those, but uh, yeah, sunroof is open. Oh, look at me surveying the land. Another thing that I like about the Model S is that it doesn't look like one of your, oh, look at me, I'm saving the world electric cars. You got the Nissan Leaf with its weird bulgy eyes and it just looks different. This just looks like an extremely expensive luxury car. But the things on this car that make it so special are the fact that it is so aerodynamic. I mean, if you look at this, it's all completely smooth. There's automatic vents that open only when the car needs cooling. Uh, the front bumper as well, it channels all the air underneath the car to the rear diffuser, which means that there is very, very minimal drag. To the side, check out the stonking 21 inch alloy wheels with low resistance rolling rubber. They're pretty damn sexy. I'm a big fan of these. But the best thing about this car, check this out, look, you got that? <laughs> Door handles that come out automatically. Oh, that's so satisfying. Towards the rear of the car, let's have a quick look inside. This car is officially a five-seater, or if you've got two seats in the back as well, a seven-seater, but I've found a solution where you can get two more people in. Here's one. Oh yeah, like a glove. And if you have a newborn with you, we'll go back to the front. Check that out. That is easily six month old kid material right there. Uh, obviously you might have to strap him or her down with a bit of duct tape, but then you'll be good to go. What more do you want from a car? Looks to kill, electric boot, 
sexy ass door handles. Now, I got this car fully charged about 265 miles. Uh, I've driven probably 50 miles now, bit of, uh, bit of town, bit of motorway, a few hard accelerations. I've now got 154 miles left in the uh, tank, uh, which isn't too bad considering this is just a big RC car. But I can imagine being an owner, I would get a bit of range anxiety, especially if there were some unplanned trips that I needed to make. And if you've got one of those wall mounted doodars at your home, they're not particularly fast at charging. Uh, but if you go to a supercharger, then you can get your full charge in about half an hour, which is incredible. But if you don't live close, then yeah, range anxiety, that'd be real. I'll admit that when the guys in the office booked the P85 in for a week, I wasn't fussed on shooting a video on it. On paper, it didn't excite me. There's no manual gearbox, no orchestra of cylinders to keep me company, and I live in a flat which makes charging a huge pain in the ass. But the moment I stepped inside the Model S, I knew that I was wrong to hate. The materials and the finish are incredible, the flat floor means that there's loads of room for activities, and the gadgets arouse my inner Steve Jobs. And then there's a first moment when my eyeballs went fuzzy from punching the throttle. I remember swearing a lot at myself, and the last time that happened, I was racing an R34 Skyline GTR from the seat of an R35. So props to Tesla. The Model S is now the first car I'd look to if I wanted a saloon with supercar slaying performance.